So, as you can see, I've got a little bit of a new set up around me. I was doing a little bit of painting and decorating lately, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I have not been uploading as much as I could have been. Apologies for that, but as you can see, the painting and decorating is now complete, and I can get back to making videos about Linux once again. It was a long time coming and it was something I was putting off for quite some time and then just the time opportunity arose so I just couldn't decline it. So today I want to talk a little bit about browsers, web browsers. It's been a while since I did a Battle of the Browsers video and a lot has happened since then. Uh, basically today's video is going to be about why I'm switching to Firefox. Now as of recording the current version of Firefox is 55 so as of the time of recording, that means it has electrolysis fully implemented and I believe um, selected by default. Um, if not, it might be, um, you know, sort of uh, unselected as a result of uh, browser add-ons and so forth. Uh, and one of those browser add-ons, which I believe does revert the multi-process um, instance of uh, the multi-process version of Firefox to revert to the single instance is the Ubuntu Extras add-on that comes installed as default on at least vanilla Ubuntu, maybe on Ubuntu Mate. I can't remember because if I if it did come with Ubuntu Mate, I would have swiftly removed it. It doesn't really add anything and, of course, um, prevents you from activating multi-process Firefox. But there's a, a nice couple of articles on OMG Ubuntu which can sort you through that. Also, uh, the latest version of Firefox has had a massive, and I mean massive, performance upgrade. Now part of this no doubt was just off the back of electrolysis, but I've been, you know, hearing things and people have been referring to stuff on mailing lists and so forth, that they've been putting a lot of effort into getting Firefox to be uh, a really good browser again. Um, you know, get it back to being the browser it was when it was taking people away from Internet Explorer 6, I think it was, back in those hellish days when we had to put up with it. Internet Explorer 6 of all things, but and that's where Firefox, you know, broke into its share, and it's gone off a cliff lately. And you can kind of see why they've gone on to all these social enterprises, and they've tried to um, copy too many other businesses. They've tried to become like hip and trendy, and that's not really what Firefox users are all about. I think Firefox users are. You know, like, I mean, I use the, the, the vehicle analogy quite a lot between um, gearboxes, automatic gearboxes, and manual shift gearboxes. There are some people that like automatic gearboxes. There are some people that prefer manual shift gearboxes. There are some people that prefer to let their machine do all the thinking for them. There are some people that prefer to have all of the control. And I kind of see Chrome versus Firefox in terms of its pragmatic use very similar to that. If you just want something basic, simple, and user-friendly, Google Chrome you know, it does the job and it is a really good browser in terms of how it, how you use it in terms of its responsiveness, use of resources, hardware acceleration, all that kind of stuff. Um, whereas with Firefox, you've got a lot more customization options. You can customize the entire layout and the UI and all that kind of stuff, um, but has recently been lacking on performance, which I think they've um, they've turned around. They're, they're the, all of these performance issues that I re that really grated me with Firefox, that kept reminding me why isn't Firefox as good a browser as Chrome or Chromium? Just why? Why isn't it? What is it that Chrome and Chromium are doing? Why is it that whenever we see a new browser come out now, it's based on Electron and not Firefox, like the like browsers used to be? You know, when you had the uh, browsers that are based on other browsers. So. I gotta say, I recommend it. If you guys have been using Chrome for quite some, you know, for, for for quite some time, because it is or has been a better browser, and it has, like, there's no, you know, beating around that particular bush. It's like Chrome have put a lot of resources, and why shouldn't they have? That's Google's window into the internet. But I've been wanting to switch away from Chrome for so long now. In fact, I don't even think there was a time when I wanted to use Chrome, and I've been trying to de-Google my life as much as possible over the past few years, and I've done a really good job at it. In fact, I'm pretty sure at this stage, YouTube is the only Google product that I use that doesn't sort of rely on someone else, you know, for sort of facilitating someone else's logistics or what have you. So. Um, the browser to me was the was the key point. It was the it was the, the the weak link in the open source chain, as it were, because with Google Chrome and yes, Chromium is the alternative, and that was the alternative that I was using. But in my last review on this channel, I covered Solus, which is an excellent distribution. I strongly advise you guys to check it out if you have the means to do so, even if it's just spinning it up in a virtual machine. But one of the things I commented on in this distribution is that in the software store, uh, it had 
Firefox and Google Chrome, but it did not have the open source Im implementation of Google Chrome, Chromium, which we see in a lot of other distributions. And um, the comment section were more than happy enough to fill me in on that particular missing piece of information. The reason that Solus uh, did not include Chromium in the repositories was a deliberate choice, and it was because although Chromium is open source, it's not privacy respecting and has had issues in the past with trying to slip in bl uh, binary blobs. There was a case um, not too long ago where the Chromium browser would actually download a little bit of software that would activate your microphone. The software itself was proprietary and was downloaded without the end user's knowledge, um, which was pretty bad. So there was uh, a lot of uh, kickback to that, and um, and it was stopped. But you know, like with the Chromium project, you have to be eternally vigilant, and it's not really a privacy respecting browser. So um, when it comes to um, trusting a vehicle to navigate yourself around the World Wide Web, uh, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to Google, it's the uh, foxes are watching the hen house. You've got the biggest advertiser on the internet, Google, that controls the window in which you see the internet or the World Wide Web through. That's incredibly dangerous. That is something that um, that I, I don't really want to do. It puts me in, in a, at an incredibly vulnerable position. It, it highly incentivizes Google to manipulate my behavior so that I spend more money. Um, and that's not just me being overly cynical. We've seen Facebook do that before. Because let's not forget why I'm particularly critical of big tech companies on this channel. Facebook were caught out not too long ago performing psychological experiments on their user base. That's not like a conspiracy theory. That actually happened. That was in the news. They were making, they were changing people's moods by choosing what content they were exposed to. That is something I don't want anything to do with. And that is one of the many reasons reasons why I'll never touch Facebook ever again. And if you think Facebook can do it, don't think that Google can't. That's why, you know, the end user has to be vigilant when it comes to choosing, you know, what vehicle you use to navigate the world wide web. So, Firefox, it's it's good again. Almost slipped into a particularly nasty turn of phrase there, but yeah, uh, Firefox. Uh, I'm now using it as my full-time uh, browser and I am enjoying every step of it. It's great. It's it's repaired all of the problems that I initially had with it. So yes, uh, Firefox. It's a really good browser again, and I couldn't be happier for it. So if you guys, you know, if it's been a while since you've checked it out, definitely uh, give it a download and give it a spin. Uh, it's version 55. So if you are on like an older version of uh, of a Linux distribution, you may not necessarily get the latest version. But I do know that it is available in Ubuntu, and almost certainly is going to be available in other distributions that keep their browsers up to date. So that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Um, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.